Today we are sitting in this beautiful park which is a heritage park called Seaforth Park. The beauty about this park is all these old huge trees. There's something about really big massive trees which is very cathartic but is also very peaceful. And what better place to be doing a book review and a book summary than in the heritage park in Sydney. Hello, hello, hello. hello. I'm Dehradun Wala Siva. And I'm Divya. Welcome back to our channel, Dehradun Wala Vlogs, a channel where we share content relating to what we read, learn, and explore. So, as we get started in today's vlog, we are going to be doing a quick book summary, book review, and basically distilling the ideas of this book that I recently read. The name of the book is Working Hard, Hardly Working, written by Grace Beverly. So the reason why we think we are aptly placed to be reviewing this book and also summarizing this working hard, hardly working is because I believe I'm working hard and... I'm hardly working. <laughs> We're also joined by two celebs. Hi Arthur. Hi Zeus. <laughs> Who are patiently sitting there as we summarize this book. So now with the hardly working person who's off with our celebs, Arthur and Zeus, I'll continue. So before we get started with the book, let's first understand a bit about Grace Beverly. So who is Grace Beverly? This vibrant young 25 year old who's achieved um, and created her own two brands. The reason why I read this book was A, I'm a bit of a bookworm, a book nerd. So I will read anything and everything that's nonfiction. The second thing is when I heard about this British entrepreneur and a 25 year old who can, who can set up two business, not one, but two businesses, which are over a million dollars, did want to read the book to see if there were any ideas that she had which related to productivity and if there was any value I could get out of this book. So enough of my rambling on reading, let's get straight into the book. So in the first chapter, which is finding your purpose, there is this word called self-actualization, which features quite a many times. But what Grace does say is make it into a verb. Don't actualization. It should be self-actualizing, which means feel fulfilled, feel contented. Now, it is it is pretty idealistic to be considering, you know, not everything is going to give you fulfillment. There are going to be bits and bobs of, of things that make you feel a bit grabby. So where she addresses that issue is by using this term called micro passion. Always be something that you like. So she says, try and fit that into your work. To give you an example, when I used to study, while studying was a bit drabby, I used to, I had this love and passion for stationery and I love the multicolored highlighters. So that's probably how I would fit my micro passions is, is highlighting in different colors and it's, it, it would actually make studying a bit more interesting. So I think that's what she meant uh, by trying to include micro passions and then finding your purpose. She's also acknowledged the fact that sometimes single purpose doesn't really work in life. So she does say have multiple purposes and then find a way to, to synergize those purposes, which then very interestingly brings us into chapter two, where she talks about productivity method. Started reading this chapter because I thought there would all be all these amazing hacks and productivity methods. To be very honest, there's nothing new in this in this chapter because if you've read, if you're a, if you're a non-fiction buff like me and you've read other books like Atomic Habits, Flow, uh, Make Make Time, and if you are following those authors who do talk about productivity, there is absolutely nothing new in this chapter. But if you're just foraying into non-fiction books and productivity books, this this book is actually a very good starting point because. She does pay homage to all those other authors and other books and she does bring a good summary into it. She does talk about scheduling, using an electronic calendar. She also does talk about the timing method or the Pomodoro method. Again, you know, these are all, all available products. It's very nicely packaged in one chapter uh, for someone who's starting out in nonfiction and productivity hacks. Um, so again, that what that's probably what makes it worthwhile is if you've read all that, you'll find it very repetitive, but again, uh, it's always nice to have things in one, one place. She also talks about um, the Eisenhower's productivity method, which if, if, you are, if you are familiar, you've seen the quadrant method where you divide a page into, two, into four quadrants and you've got important, urgent. So if it's important and urgent, you do it first. If it's important, not urgent, you can spend your time. Not important, not urgent is my favorite quadrant because that means don't do it. So you get the gist of it. 
this then takes us to the third chapter which is let it flow now if you've ever read this book called flow and i would recommend if you haven't read this book called flow which is read written by michaeli when you're doing something interesting and we've all even though we don't know what this label flow means we've all been there when you're playing this really interesting game you're doing something you get so engrossed in it you don't even feel tired you don't you don't you typically lose track of time and that's the best position to be in because you're fully engaged mentally physically and and with all your senses you're doing a particular task that's taking you forward so that's essentially what's written is how to get into the flow and and again nothing new in this chapter she's basically taken the entire book written by Michaeli and summarized it in this chapter she does talk about two key things which is one is the pour out and burn out so we essentially as human beings when we do reach that flow stage we essentially do completely pour out ourselves we don't take enough breaks and then we reach the stage of burnout that's something which i think is just not a generational thing all of us are up uh, have have faced burnout have faced a pour out in, in our situation and what that comes back to is we need to understand our own limitations and you know pace ourselves that's the, that's the key word here we have to pace ourselves uh, because there's no point burning ourselves out and de- and then being essentially useless for the next few days but if you want a really good deep dive i would suggest flow by michaeli is a good place to just focus on that very topic the last chapter in working hard which is called defining success is it's a good assimilation of this whole concept of working hard now we've come from this generation if you look at the 60s 70s 80s even when i was growing grew up with the idea if you work hard you can get anything you want but again that that whole statement needs to be taken with a pinch of salt if i want to head south and i start walking north there's no way even though i'm working very hard i'm never going to achieve my goal because i'm not on the right directional path so while working hard is very important you also should be directional that is working towards the goal you want to go which is why this whole topic of defining success what is success to you now what success meant to me when i was 10 years old 15 years old is not the same definition today the definition of success for me today at 30 or 40 is not going to be the same definition i'm going to have at 60 So I always tell myself and this has come through a lot of learning is chances of success will change as we progress in life. So again essentially what she comes down to is defining success is what does success mean to you? She talks about this thing called smart goals. Now anybody who's worked in um corporates and we've done our six monthly KPIs or tried to justify to our bosses why we deserve this promotion we talk about these things called smart goal which is specific measurable attainable r is for relevant and t means uh, time oriented defining goals um, using the smart technique and she also talks about the imposter syndrome now all of us have somehow felt what the imposter syndrome no enough we always self question ourselves so i think she does address that point that we need to have that faith in ourselves and once we convince that this is what success means to us we have to go forward with it that basically wraps up part 1 of the book which is working hard which then takes me to the favorite part and i was looking for the shortcut methods which is hardly working how do i get to that end goal by doing putting in the least amount of effort don't get me wrong but hang on i mean if you can get there faster why not if i'm if i'm hurdling in a in a horseback i'd rather take a lamborghini and reach there quicker isn't it But then there's also that secondary question is is always journey before destination. Do you if you really enjoy what you're doing and you want to sometimes do want to take the scenic road. So take that take that advice with a pinch of salt. I mean there's there's no harm taking a scenic route if um it just takes you another one hour because I always say journey before destination. You've got to you've got to enjoy where you're going. It's not just about where you're going. That brings us to part 2 which is hardly working. Now again, this part also has four chapters and uh, these four chapters are redefining productivity. The second is having it all. Third is art of doing nothing, which which is kind of what I am doing here. Um third one is art of doing nothing and then last bit is final thoughts where she brings it all together. One is redefining productivity. The thing with the opening remark in this is the ramp up ramp down model. When we do a 40 hour week or where the world says we have to do a 40 hour week it's not always going to be 7 and a half hours each day it is going to be a 10 hour 5 hour 3 hour 2 hour but it is going to be spread out because once you've found your flow you don't want to break it you you're not going to stop it just saying oh sorry mate i need to go you want to finish that piece because you're in that flow i've had days like that i know i know we all have had days like that learn to say no so again following the eisenhower's productivity of quadrant method 
if it is something that can be delegated or deleted, we need to question, all right, does it really need to be done? And does it really need to be done? Also, because being an influencer and being um, being this young 25 year old, I think she's also addressed the whole peer pressure point of view in this book. Of every generation deals with peer pressure, but I think with the social media influence, I think both millennials, even Gen Z are subjected to it even more than the previous generations because now there is a lot more information. While in my generation, I would have had peer pressure from say a bunch of 40 people in my class. But I think now, given social media, people are getting pressured by 1,000, 10,000 people, depending on how many people are there in your network. She also says, take that with a pinch of salt. Um, we've all been in social media. We've been, we've jazzed up this 2 a.m. hustle, work hard, and gives out a syndrome or a vibe that there are so many opportunities available in today's world with hustle culture and you know buy your nft buy crypto if you're not trading you're the one who's not taking up the opportunity you know there are so many methods of working so she does say define and redefine productivity which kind of goes back to the previous or the last chapter in part one which is is that what you want in life is that what you define success when I was thinking about this, this took me back to an analogy. Um, when I was growing up, my father uh, gave me an example and this was his way of telling me, you know, you've got to pick and choose your life. So there was a little story um, where there was this fisherman who was just sitting by the ocean, just catching his fish for the day. And then he comes in touch with this tourist who comes and says, what are you doing? He says, I'm fishing. And he's taking up and this tourist is taking a break from his corporate life and spending a week. And he's obviously, as, as always, recommendations come from consultants. He says, I can consult you. Instead of catching one fish, I'll, you can catch, you can buy this lovely trawler. You can buy, you can, you can have hundreds and thousands of fishes that you can catch and then you can sell that. And then the fisherman says, and then what do I do with that? Then you'll have all this money and you can buy everything that you want. Oh, great. What do I do with that? Then the consultant got very frustrated. He said, you mean, what will you do with the money? And uh, he says, yeah, what will I do with the money? Mate, you can come and have a holiday in this beautiful ocean catching fish. And then the fisherman says, that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> Sometimes you've got to revisit and say, hang on, why do I take this whole circle only to do this for five days when I'm, I'm able to enjoy this all throughout my life? So again, again, on, the, on that is a funny side to this, but I think that's pretty much what she, what she means by this is, yes, you can see and you can, you can see everything on social media, but you've got to decide what to pick up. So take it with a pinch of salt. The next chapter talks about having it all. All people are doing multiple roles in today's environment. So I am a mother to my dogs, I'm also a wife, I'm also taking up multiple roles and I believe I have it all. But there are days where I get overwhelmed and say, oh, I wish I could have it all, I wish I could do that as well, you know, going to a Pilates class, having that uh, ace figure body, you know, we all wish we had it all. Um, and this is where she says, you can have it all as long as you can draw that line and say, this is what I want. And, and always strive for, for the best, have it all. And if you do divide your time, because remember Pareto's concept, work will expand to fill the time. So if you remember Pareto's principles and you can prioritize what you want, you can have it all. The last one is doing nothing. Now there is an Italian saying on this, I think it's called La Dolce Vita. When we went on a holiday to Italy, you would literally, when you go to a village, the shops would close from one to three. They would do nothing. It is called the art and the beauty of doing nothing. Just take that time. Just come, leave your phone at home, leave your iPod at home. Just come and sit in a park. Spend time with your child. Spend time with your pet. Do what you like doing. Just breathe. And that is called the art of doing nothing. Now, why is this important? In today's world, we are overloaded with information you need something in when i was growing up we had to actually go to the library read the encyclopedia my parents obviously favored education they've got the encyclopedia home so but again you know that that still required a lot of effort you had to find the section and then find the information now information is literally in your hands you can just google it so we are living in an information overload world so sometimes the art of doing nothing kind of takes the pressure off. It does decompress you. So try that. Leave in your comments below whether any of these techniques work for you. So essentially, now that we've come to the end of this book summary, I'll key takeaways from this book. The first one that really resonated with me was how Quadrant Method, I had used that at the start of my career. 
and which is why i love the last fourth quadrant which is um not urgent not important don't do it i love that was my key takeaway um the second thing that i um the second takeaway i had from this book is from that chapter having it all i think we often do need to be reminded that nothing is unattainable nothing is impossible if you work hard enough which is what chapter 1 says or smartly work for it there is sky is the limit or sky is not even the limit the number 3 takeaway that i had was from the chapter defining success the defining success is each one and in each phase of life you're going to have a different definition of success and you've got to make it your own you've got to enjoy the journey as i say journey before destination you got to enjoy the ride there's no point reaching that's yes i reached it but i don't remember any of the path on how i got there i don't want to be so burnt out and it all comes back to balance and again this is something uh, i was actually talking to my parents about it and this morning you know i was telling my dad he's never missed a single parent teacher meeting of mine and what a great example of having that balance and he's extremely accomplished in his career he's a fantastic dad and both my parents have been fantastic in raising me and um you know they've had they've individually had amazing careers they've been on top of their fields um but it's all about you know having that striking that right balance so if if there's something to emulate i would always say having it all is possible my parents did have it <laughs> my parents do have it all and the last and final take was art of doing nothing it's sometimes so important to know we try and fill up every single minute of our day not realizing that every single minute doesn't need to be <laughs> doesn't need to be filled in there can be those blank spots where you know you just need to decompress and take it in and in my last final closing statement on this book yes i do agree there's nothing new in this book it is a summary of a lot of other books that we've read in productivity by like getting things done by david allen there is outliers there's deep work by carl newport um atomic habits by james clear so if if you if you don't want to spend time reading all these other productivity books and you want to get a quick cheat code cheat code summary then definitely start with this book um it's a good starting point fantastic effort um uh, by a comparatively young uh, entrepreneur or social influencer so if you have time check that book out and this video is obviously not sponsored but check it out on an audiobook or read the book if you have time you won't regret it so hopefully you enjoyed my rambling as much as i did today and if you did enjoy this then please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel there are donbala vlogs and also please tell your friends to do the same and smash that subscribe button till then thank you so much for watching signing off this is dehradun bala seva and i'm divya and we are going to leave you with some shots of arthur and zeus getting trained by dehradun bala